Hello friends, this is Reza Rad from Radacad. I want to talk about the Copilot experience within Microsoft Fabric Notebook. How Copilot can go and help you to go and write your code and do data engineering or data science in particular. I'm going to show you how this helps you to go and write that the, the Python code without you actually being a data scientist. How Copilot can do that. Let's go and check it out. Microsoft Fabric is the environment that you can go and do data warehousing, data engineering, Power BI. There are many different bits and pieces in it. One of the sections that you can use Microsoft Fabric extensively for data engineering or data science is Notebook. Notebook is a place that we can go and write our code in four different languages. It could be R, Python, Scala, or Spark SQL. Uh, each of these languages have their own benefits. I have a separate video talking about what is Notebook, what are the benefits of using Notebook. Uh, now let's assume that you want to use Notebook. You have a data set. You have a table that you want to analyze that. You want to run some machine learning codes with it. With it. Uh, but you are not really a data scientist. Can Copilot help you to do that? And um, the answer is yes. You need to know how to work with the Copilot and how to work with the code generated with it, of course. I'm going to show you this as an example. So uh, here I have uh, already a notebook, but I'm going to close that, create a new notebook. Uh, first thing to know about uh, Copilot experience in Microsoft Fabric is that you need to have a Fabric Capacity license. Any license in Fabric Capacity would work even from F2. And of course, you need to enable the Copilot experience in admin settings, in tenant settings. Once you have it enabled, then in different places you can go and use that Copilot. So here I'm going to create a new notebook item. Let's say this would be notebook. Um, Notebook number three. Yep, that's a good name for this. Uh, now I'm going to use this notebook to connect to an existing data that I have. So I'll say and uh, I'll say add existing data source. I have a lake house with some tables in it. I'll connect to that lake house, um, and this lake house already has some tables in it. Customer. Uh, sales and product. In Notebook, as I mentioned, you can write your code in four different languages. So I'm going to use Copilot in here. There are two ways you can use Copilot. You can use Copilot as the side uh, Copilot over here, which helps you to go and write your code, or you can use Copilot embedded in line in the code. Uh, if you use the side one, it gives you also more like generic suggestions, whereas if you use this one, this can generate the code that you put directly in your cell. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say um, load dim customer into a Spark Spark data frame uh, and what this does this will create a data frame like a variable table variable and loads data of the customer to it of course it does not run the code it writes the code a python code that does this job for me and then it suggests that code to me which i would have the option to say i'll accept it or i won't i might change my prompt for it. Running these uh, prompts on fabric capacity would cause memory and CPU utilization compute. Uh, so you need to be careful about how much um, uh, capacity you have, uh, how much uh, free resources you have. I'm running this on an F2 and that is why probably this is running slower. So here is the code. As you can see, it loads that customer table into a data frame. It also adds a little bit here that would uh, just like limit the number of rows in case you do not want to load the entire customer table you just want to load only part of it that is what this one does it limits for example to a thousand records and then it displays it so i would say I'll, yes i'll accept it but in my case i don't really want to um want to uh put a maximum number to to load because my customer table is about 18,000 records so I'm going to load the entire of that so I'll comment this line 
and then I would run this. So this generated a code already that would load that data into a data frame, a table variable for me, which I want to then go and use this table variable um, and do some machine learning uh, algorithm on top of it. Now, while this is loading, the machine learning algorithm I want to work on is going to be uh, finding out why, what are the most uh, important factors for customers that cause them having no cars. Uh, so the data is loaded. This is a sample data. You see I have customer information like this. I have the ID, uh, key column, their name, uh, last name. Let me zoom out. Uh, uh, like first name, last name, uh, their marital status, gender, email address, their yearly income, total children, number of children at home, the English education, uh, occupation, uh, are, do they own a house, how many cars they own, what is their address, so quite a lot of information about each customer. Now I want to use this data to analyze and find out those customers who have um, like zero cars or less cars, what are the most important factors that cause that? Was it their education level? Is it their occupation? Is it the number of children they have at home? Things like that. In Power BI, we also have like a key, inf um, um, uh, we have a um, visual key influencer visual which will give us the same thing but I want to do that uh, here using a Python code so I'll go and add another cell here and I'm going to ask a prompt here that helps me do that so um, and I'm writing this prompt as I speak so it might need some work on it so I would say um, I want to find out what is the most important attributes uh, what are the most important attributes uh, columns for customers to have no car uh, work um, write a code that uses a machine learning algorithm or model and train with existing data and show me the result, right? So this is pretty generic. I haven't really uh, mentioned uh, what columns to start with, things like that. I haven't mentioned what machine learning model, what algorithm I want, and I didn't even mention what is the type of output I want. So pretty generic, but let's see what Copilot will come, uh, come up with this generic code. This uh, will show how helpful this will be and then I will work on my uh, prompt changes so that I can uh, make it better. Of course, uh, this might require multiple time working on it. One thing to know about machine learning process is that there are different uh, stages of it. The one uh, stage is determining the algorithm that works on this data. Um, depending on uh, what you are working on, different algorithm might come with different results. Um, and here is uh, a sample code, which is quite a bit of code, but let's have a look at what this is doing at the moment. So here, as you can see, this is uh, using that data frame again with the customer data. And then uh, it considers some of these columns as high potential for importance. Now I can work on this. I can say, for example, these columns are not uh, considered as potential columns. Like for example, in this case, geography key birth date might not be, right? Uh, the education occupation is, right? So I, I can go and say, well, let's just accept this code first. Then I say geography key or birth date are not. The rest would be marital status, gender, yearly income, total children. The rest looking okay. And interesting fact is that this picked most of this from analyzing that table. So it did not, for example, pick first name or last name. It did not pick the customer key. It did not pick the email address because these, these were columns with uh, a lot of unique values. So it kind of understand that, that this is not a value that you can, under, uh, you can analyze it in a machine learning algorithm. Uh, and it picked these columns. Uh, it needed a little bit change, but uh, after that, everything worked uh, pretty 
fine, right? So uh, I'll get that, and the rest of this code seems pretty okay. I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to run this and see what this will come up with. If it turns out it's not the right code, if it has an error, I might need to change my prompt and get a different result for it. Uh, but while this is running it, I can actually have a look at this and see what this is doing. I think this is going to use a classification algorithm. Yep, as you can see, while this is running it, you see it uses a classification algorithm, random forest classifier. Uh, it passes parameter from my data set to this, which would be based on that future columns like a unique array of those future columns, passing it to it and analyzing it to get the result. Uh, as you can see, it's quite a bit of code. It fits also my data set as a training set to my model. Normally we split our data set into a training set and a test set. Uh, let's say in this example, I'll pass anything anyway. I'm not going to do much of a uh, confusion matrix of analyzing this against the test data. I'm just going to do a very simple uh, machine learning model example in here. Um, so this will take some time to run it, but here is the result. You can see it came up with the result and said that these are the importance of no car. So apparently English education is one of the most important one. Uh, then commute distance, like pr probably if some customers have a certain English education and a specific commute distance or occupation or age, combination of this will uh, result in having no car. So this ran that created the result for me, which is amazing actually. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one extra cell at the end of it and I'm going to use Copilot again. This time I would say, uh, what English education values and commute distance um, average and English occupation value results in having less cars. Now this would be only analyzing based on that data. So this should not really create another machine learning uh, training code. It would just analyze that and come up with values such as, for example, if they are in bachelor degree, their commute distance is like one or I don't know, two kilometers, um, then uh, less likely that they have a car. Of course, what we are doing right now is descriptive analytics, understanding what is existing in the data. We could do use this for predictive analytics as well. But as I said, I'm working on a really simple example here. Uh, what the fact that this co-pilot can help me writing all of this without really being a data scientist or knowing how to write all of these co uh, Python code, that is amazing. Uh, but it never reduced the need for you to go and review the code and make some changes like what I did. Like I removed, for example, the birth date from it because it did not had any uh, any meaning it. Okay, so uh, any meaning in it. So what it is saying rephrase. So let's see what English education values. Um, Let's just say what English education, customer commute distance, and English occupation values result in having less car. Let's try that. So this um, operation is uh, using the compute power, as I mentioned, it is possible that you go and um, and limit the usage of Copilot only for certain users, because then um, in that case, you know who are the people working with it. They might work on their prompts to be more efficient. You can also connect your notebook to a code that is uh, more um, like associated with uh, only one or two nodes of Spark, not all the nodes. So here is the code. Let's go and see how this is working. So uh, this is going to run the code using those average values that we have. And I'm going to accept this and we'll see what the result will provide based on this. 
so here it is so what we are saying is that if they are for example bachelor these are a few cases if they are bachelor if they are manual workers or they are graduate degree clerical their distance commute distance is less than a mile uh, they won't have a car this is based on the existing data now imagine this would be quite helpful if you want to run a campaign for these customers like we have a set of new customer data and we are promoting something like a bike we want to promote it for those who don't have a car so we'll go and find out those customers with this certain english education category with this commute distance with this occupation and then we promote it this uh, information for them of course i'm not saying that whatever copilot generates as a code is the final result and you should be considering that and using that but it is pretty amazing the result that it gives you with just answering with just asking few prompts and g getting the output always remember that you have to uh, review it like for example if i had the birth date here i might had a incorrect result uh, because birth dates like different values it might come up with something that is not really that much useful uh, however here as you can see it considered birth date to be a, um, a value that it derives the age from it which is also another interesting fact that how copilot understood that this could be an important factor so i hope this video helped you to understand how copilot experience for a data science in fabric notebook works if you like this video go ahead and subscribe into our youtube channel we have weekly videos about microsoft fabric about power bi until the next video bye